you. Before the organization becomes effective, then you have to be effective first. So it starts again with you, because when you become the right person and you are able to identify what are the things you need to do, then you start to build, you start to do the, the tasks, the activities to get to your goals. And guess what? Your goals are the things you want to have. So this flowchart actually means the be, do, have flowchart. So let's start with you. How do you become the right person in this business? So number one, you have to ask yourself before we even start. Answer the question, why am I doing in Global? Again, as I always say, in my NDOs, in my trainings, what would I always say? You must have a compelling reason. Your first few months, oh, not even months, your first few years here, you're just going to make minimal money, minimal income. And a lot of people will laugh at you and tell you that you made the wrong choice. You know what I'm saying? So, it's going to be very hard. So, you must have a compelling reason. That's what I was saying before about having a monstrous why. A huge why. Enough why that, you know, you can take all these, you know, uh, things that people say against you and against your business. A compelling reason that would be able to wake you up every morning, even if you're tired, and go to the office and still talk to people. A huge why, a deep why, that even if you're so tired from your work, that you're tempted to just go to your place and just rest and just go to sleep, you know, this compelling reason and deep why push you to still talk to people and still go late at night and sleep late until, you know, in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Because I'm telling you, it's going to be very hard if you don't have a compelling reason why you are doing this. So before anything else, in fact, even if I don't teach you, even if we do not guide you, even if we do not educate you, but if you have your own reason, a compelling reason, a huge why, a deep why, a deep reason why you're doing this, even if you don't have any teachers and mentors, I'm telling you, that why will ultimately push you and guide you to become successful. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's the, probably the same reason why you're here in UAE, in a foreign land for you, because uh, you're far away from your families. A lot of you here are working as foreigners. And those sacrifices we can take because we have a huge reason. So ask yourself first. First, why am I doing it in global? Second, were you able, have you adapted all the attitudes necessary for your success? Because a lot of us would like to earn already, but sometimes we still lack the attitude to become successful. We are so impatient, okay? We, we, we keep complaining, we're, we're so negative, we, we become emotional, simple rejection. So can you imagine, if you try to study the life or if you try to study all those successful people, that you would know that really what, what got them to their stage of becoming successful is that they have these right attitudes. That's why they became successful. So let's just take a look at our distributors here in Anglo, but the, the top distributors, people who are making you know, a lot of money already, people who made it to the top already. So just try to assess their attitudes. What kind of attitudes do these people possess? Why are they so successful? These people, I believe, are patient. These people have credibility. These people have the right character. And do you think upon joining in Global, these people already possess those attitudes or those attitudes were developed along the way? They were developed along the way. How did they develop their attitudes? Trainings and experience. Because the best teacher is experience. You know, experience is so good that it gives you the tests first before the lesson. And like in universities, it's always the lessons first before the tests. Experience is the opposite. It's always the tests and comes the lesson afterwards. So just take everything that comes your way as learning experiences so that you will be able to enhance the attitudes you need to become successful. 
So welcome those challenges. Do you believe you're capable, capable of achieving your dreams? So you should be asking these things to yourself. Are you willing to pay the price? Because success has a cost. It doesn't come free. There's no such a thing as free lunch. You have to work for it. As I always say, last night I said it already because, you know, if, if, um, I, and I quote, uh, I quote The Rock, if you know The Wrestler, The Rock, uh, Dwayne Johnson, okay? His success is, uh, he was always saying, he's always saying that he, he's not an overnight success, okay? His overnight success took him 59, 15 years to become successful. So there's no such a thing as overnight success. You really have to pray, you have to really pay the price before you become successful. Part of that, of course, is failure, frustration, discouragement, and setbacks. And as network marketers, believe me, this thing should be normal for you. This thing should be normal to us. This should never surprise you anymore. If you've been in this business for two years, and every time you get discouraged, every time there are prospects who walks away from you, and then you, you know, you still ask yourself, what happened? What's happening to my business? I'm telling you, you are not growing. It should come to a point that these things, you are already immune to setbacks, discouragement, and frustration. Are you with me? Yes. And how can you become successful if, you know, every time there are discouragement, setbacks, you get affected, you get emotional about it. And sometimes people, they take these things, they take these things, failure, frustration, discouragement, setbacks, they take those things as signs or symptoms for their permanent failure. It's like, you know, if they've never been making money for the last five months, they would be saying, oh, this is really not for me. This is a sign. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, my downline quit. Okay. This is a sign I probably have, I have to quit also. And if you ask, why do you have to quit? Well, my one downline quit, so why? You know, I just have one side and no other side yet, and he quit already. <laughs> okay. As I was saying, there is cause of success. Success requires knowledge, preparation, and persistence. Again, you become successful based on the knowledge, how you prepare, and how you persist. Now, let's not just complicate things for now. You want to become successful, tell yourself, do you have enough knowledge? Yes, sir, I do have enough knowledge. Well, let me assess, uh, I mean, how depth, how deep, what's the breadth, the width of your knowledge? Are you ready? Are you already, you know, do you have the capacity, do you have the knowledge to, you know, handle a huge organization already. That's the first thing you have to ask yourself. You want to make 50,000 US dollars per month? Like Joseph Lim? Well, uh, let me correct myself for that. Uh, I was saying that last night he made $60,000. That's wrong. It's supposed to be 600,000 USD in one year. The guy makes about what? 2.5 million a month. So that's about 50,000 USD. Am I right? Yeah. It's 50,000 times 50 pesos, that's 2.5 million. So therefore, 50,000 USD times 12 months, that's 600,000 wow. US dollars. For 2017 alone. I'm sorry, for 2016 alone. Now, if you want to make about 25,000 US dollars, 30,000 US dollars now, are you ready? Do you have the knowledge to handle a huge organization already? So the thing is, if you have four downlines and you know you feel pressured and stressed already, how can you become successful? <laughs> you have four downlines giving you headaches and you will go to your upline up like may have four downlines, they're really very hard to handle. <laughs> can you imagine four people? And you ask yourself, you want to become successful? Come on, guys. Come on. How would the universe give you a thousand people if four people you cannot handle? You're, are you with me? Yes. How prepared are you? You have to prepare. Can you can you speak publicly already? Can you assume leadership? Can you set a good example to your downlines already? Do you have strong leadership? Okay. Are you always a bit? Are you always on the run in terms of getting your goals? 
you have to be prepared. It's like any sports. You don't go to the ring, boxing for example. You don't go out there not being prepared. You, go, you, you know what I'm saying? Yes. You don't go to basketball not being prepared. You have to stretch, you have to like run. You have to prepare yourself. It's the same way in this business. Are you prepared to have the skills? Do you know how to present? Do you know how to talk? Do you know how to close? Do you know how to handle people? And, of course, success requires persistence. You know, of all things, failure can never handle persistence. Persistence is like an ant who tries to devour a tiger. Can you imagine how persistence is so powerful? Persistence is like an ant who tries to devour a tiger. Small but repeated attempt will complete any undertaking. Small but repeated. 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 One on one but repeatedly done. One on one OPP but repeatedly done. One on one presentation online but repeatedly done. Again, persistence is like an ant who tries to devour our time. Small. But ladies and gentlemen, do it long term. You can have a huge organization and therefore make a lot of money. So, your attitude is very important because it affects your behavior. Your behavior affects your habit. Your habit affects your personality. Because you can tell a person how or what kind of person is based on their habits. Right? Based on what they do because habits are routine. It's who you are. Again, let me repeat. Attitude determines a person's behavior, a person's behavior. And a person's behavior becomes their habit. And you can tell a person's personality based on their habit. And guess what? Your personality will impact your destiny. So can you imagine? Destiny will ultimately come or will ultimately be placed upon your attitude. So, Make sure to get rid of your negative attitudes. Believe me. You have to change. To change your life. You will never be able to change your life if you never change. You have to change first for the better, for your life, to change for the better as well. That's how it is. That's how it's been working. Some very important attitudes. So you, have, you have to have this unwavering belief. Because without belief, there is no action. You know, I've been a trainer for the last 20 years. Believe me. The power of belief, ladies and gentlemen, is a matter. Belief can change the way you perceive reality. I will repeat. Belief can change a person's perspective, perception of reality. Let me give you an example. Way back, uh, I mean, way back in the Philippines, or practically, this is just an example, but uh, it also happens, or it's also happening in the entire AIM global community all over the world, where people coming from poor family made it to the top. Have you heard about that? Yes. So take it from the example of Mr. Leo Kaduya of uh, Agbilaran Bohol. Leo, is one of our top distributors down in the south, southern Philippines. Right now, his present, just to give you his uh, present life in AIM Global, six years or seven years in the business, Leo Kaduya is driving three cars. Okay? First car is a Mitsubishi Pajero. Probably here in Dubai, it's not a big deal to buy Pajero. But in the Philippines, it's a big deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. Because the price of cars here are actually twice when they go to the Philippines because of tax and duties. So like, if you know, the, if a Pajero here costs about 1.2, 1.3 million, in the Philippines, a Pajero costs about 2.5 million. Three cars, Mitsubishi Pajero, he has a Toyota Fortunate, and he has a brand new Ford Pickup Ranger. That's his present. 
is living in a four-story building in their place, in their province. And this guy is making about 400,000 pesos per month. Divided by 50, that's about 8,000 US dollars per month. That's him. I never yet added the income of his wife. Because husband and wife. You know what I'm saying? Yes. His wife, Annalisa Kaduya, okay, is making about 300,000 per month. That's additional 600,000 USD. Their combined income is about 14,000 per month US dollars. Per month. Let's talk about his past. Seven years ago. Seven, eight years ago. Guess what? This guy finished fifth grade. <laughs> this guy used to drive, used to be a tricycle driver. I don't know if our, you know, other friends from other countries know what a tricycle is. It's a motorcycle with a makeshift sidecar. And uh, we use that for like, you know, public transportation. So we call that tricycle. So he's just a tricycle driver. He, he never even finished elementary. So can you imagine? Fifth grade, tricycle driver. I do not know how he was sponsored in the business. Maybe his sponsor couldn't look for anyone anymore. So that's why you come with me. Join the Ingoban. Didn't know practically anything about networking. But the moment he sat down in the seminar room, attended trainings, the trainings changed his belief. His reality is that they are so poor. They don't finish elementary. Tricycle driver. Lives in, in, in shanties or squatters area. That's his reality. But the belief when they attended is this. I can change my life. I will become successful. I will become a multimillionaire. I will buy my own car. I will have my own house. Now let me ask you. What happened to his life? The things that we see now materializing in his life, do you think was based on his reality or was based on his belief? Based on his belief. That's why belief can change one's perception of life. How about Miss Gemma Hamisola? Gemma Hamisola of Cebu City factory worker for the last 18 years. Garments factory lives under the bridge somewhere in Mactan, Cebu. You know the bridge's name? Mactan New Bridge. They live there. And I, don't need, I do not need to describe to you how it is to live under the bridge. That's her reality. They are so poor. If, she, if you see Gemma personally, she's short lady, very timid, very shy, barely talks. That's her reality. But she believed. She will be, become successful. That in Globus is her chance to become really successful financially. What happened to Gemma Amisola? He is our top two distributor in the Visayas region back in the field making about half a million pesos per month or 10,000 US dollars per month. Living in an 8 million house somewhere in Southern Cebu. Has qualified for our profit sharing for three times already. This coming February 12th is her third profit sharing award for the last three years. What's her reality? Poor? Amy? Didn't finish high school? factory worker, lives under the bridge, shanties, slum area. That's her reality. 
but her belief is different from her reality. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So in life, you do not get what you deserve. You get what you believe you deserve. So change your belief. Persistence. We've, had a, we've talked about this earlier already. Motivation. Last night. We talked about that. Positive mental attitude means seeing things in positive ways. In positive ways. I, I, I started here in networking with just three people coming from, you know, a hundred prospects. After talking to about a hundred prospects after a month, I signed up three, pe three people. And you could see that as, you know, those people who rejected me are more, of course, than those people who joined. But honestly, I thank those people that didn't join me because they, they taught me a very invaluable lesson. They made me tough. So if there are a lot of challenges that you actually experience, you know, take it positively because they are teaching you to be tough. They are actually preparing you for something bigger. Can you imagine if you try to talk to a lot of people and all those people say yes to you and will buy the seven inch? <laughs> all presentation, okay, I join you. After you presented, okay, I join you. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if all the people in the world you talk to will join you? You have to be scared. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have to be scared. Why? Because, uh, you know, God is giving you everything already. Maybe your time is near. <laughs> huh? You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, a lot of people will complain that life is too, life is so hard. So let's just try to imagine what if life is not hard? What if life is not, you know, challenging? Probably a lot of people will be at the the seashore, you know, uh, playing with their tummy because <laughs> they're not doing anything. They're bored. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Leadership, of course. You were talking about you. Step up. Get out of your comfort zone. Assume leadership. People who make it big in this business have their own initiative. Leaders do not need to be pushed by someone else to move. Real leaders have initiative. I mean, you don't need to be constantly supervised to become successful. Even if you do not have uplines, even if your upline is not making follow-ups on you, this is your business, this is not the business of your upline, you know, move along. Take action. This is not something like, you know, uh, when my upline is, you know, very timid, she's weak, she's not supporting me, she's not a leader. Well, guess what? If your upline is not a leader, that's, that's an opportunity for you to step up. If your, lead, your, if your upline is strong, then be grateful as well. You know why? It's a blessing. So either way, you know, coming from my personal experience, when I started the business 21 years ago, I was never like this. I joined networking 21 years ago with a lot of condition. My best friend was my sponsor and I thank him, you know, until this day. And until the rest of my, I mean, I, until the day I leave this world, I'm going to be thankful for my sponsor. So I turned him down, did the business, went back to see me. He was practically driving his brand new car after seven months, then I joined. But I have many conditions. I will join, but Never, never, ever make me talk in front. <laughs> and guess what? The uplines, the sponsors, will promise you heaven and hell. <laughs> Everything under the sun. Just to make you join. I was telling you, never make me talk. Oh, hey, Jordan. A lot of, uh, you know, conditions. I will never talk. You do it for me. I'll just bring prospects and everything. He keeps saying, okay, of course, just, you know, just join. <laughs> these these outlines are sponsors, you know, they promise you everything. 
So when I signed up, I joined, I bought my registration package, here comes the real thing. <laughs> Can you imagine? So there was this experience, uh, when, of course, when I was bringing people to the office, you would talk to my prospects and all. And one time I needed him for my seminar out of the country, uh, out, of the, out of town. And he was uh, generous enough to give me time to talk to the people I've organized somewhere. So he went there, talked about, you know, 20, 25 people, and I was very happy. It was the first seminar I conducted with about 25 people I organized, and my upline was there talking and all it. I was saying that, yeah, he's making his promises true. He's being true to his promises. And after the seminar, he was like, you know, people, you want me to go back here next Sunday? And my audience was saying, yeah! Okay, bring your prospects. Next Sunday, I will go back here. And I was, you know, at the side, and you know, my, my ears were clapping. <laughs> it was like, oh, my upline will go back and talk again. Wow. And we went home, he was driving his car, and I was really very thankful. And I was like, his name was June. June, thank you very much for volunteering again. And we will go back on Sunday. And he was silent and just driving the car. <laughs> so I was like, thank you. I mean, you know. Uh, it's really very generous of you. You're gonna give me time, etc. And the people are excited. And he was just driving the car. <laughs> and then suddenly he broke his silence by telling me, you know what, Jordan? I am not actually available on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> and my heart started pounding. <laughs> And you know that feeling when your heart is pounding and you're so nervous that even your saliva starts, you know, uh, tasting bitter. It's like your gallbladder went to the, uh, under your tongue. Because I know already what it means when it's not available by Sunday. And I was cursing him and I was like, you cannot do this to me. You told me that you will do everything for me. I'm your best friend, remember? I was furious and all, and he was like, you know, George, you can do that, I know, I trust you, you are little ready, I taught you already, you can do this. I was like, you never do this to me. And we were debating and arguing, and when I told him, this really pissed me off, when he answered me this way, when I asked him, when I told him, you know what, let's just drop the schedule this coming Sunday. And you know how he responded to me? Well, we can do that. It's your loss anyway, not mine. <laughs> I never spoke a single word anymore after that until he dropped me off at my place. And I really slammed the door of his car. <laughs> I felt bad. You know, anyway, I told myself I had a week at the time to prepare for the next Sunday. So I did my homework, I tried to you know, review the marketing plan, I went to the office and tried to study and observe the speakers how they do it. And next Sunday comes my big day. <laughs> I was alone, everything. And there was just about 25 people again, lots of first timers. A lot of them were looking for Jew. <laughs> At the back of my mind again, I was cursing him again. Was, you know what I'm saying? So, of course, what would you expect from a beginner like me? First time to talk in front, I had no public speaking skills. I took engineering, I didn't took marketing. <laughs> I didn't take marketing, Lori. I didn't take marketing simply because I didn't want you know, talking to people. So I, and there was, I was talking to this, uh, I mean, writing at this Manila paper being stuck to the wall. <laughs> of uh, some, you know, the corner in the house, and I was like, you know, I know I wasn't affected. And after my seminar, guess what? Nobody joined. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, after my seminar, I was like, what am I doing to my life? <laughs> I should go back working, and, you know, I should be, yeah, I should be, you know, as an engineer, I should be going back to, my job. And I was putting all those products inside my box. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But there was this old lady who approached me. 
she was very simple, wearing this, you know, duster. And she was like, sir, can you do this type of seminar at my place? And I was like, well, suddenly my eyes glowed, you know, because there was this old woman who, felt I, who, who I felt believed in me at that time. And I was like, of course, Tita. Okay, we can do this. And I taught her, she went to the office, got our registration package, okay. And then her name is Tessie. So we call her, I call her Nanay Tessie. In Tagalog, uh, mother of the Tagalog mother is Nanay. So Mother Tessie, so I call her Nanay Tessie. So Nanay Tessie went to join and uh, she was like, okay, let's do this at my place next time. I'll be, I'll be uh, inviting some of my friends. So I was very excited because among those 25 people or so, there was one lady who joined. And it was my first ever public speaking seminar. <laughs> and I was like, well, probably I did good. So next Sunday, I will prepare, you know, better this time and on. So I went to their place the following Sunday, and lo and behold, there were about 50, 50 men, big men, waiting for me. <laughs> 50 at least. So I was like, when I was holding my my registration package, my, my products for demonstration, they're all big and I was looking at them, going in front, I assembled my products and all. I made the presentation and everything to cut it short, ladies and gentlemen. Because I was surprised where did this old lady got this, you know, 50 able men as my audience at the time. You know, I learned after that, Nana Tessie happens to work at the time to a ketchup factory a repackaging ketchup factory where you can see for example Jollibee their 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 sachet um, ketchup she works at that factory and she happens to be the oldest factory worker there and everyone there treats her like a mother So she has this authority that when she says, let's go attend the seminar, everybody attend. <laughs> and when she says, you know what? Everybody sign up. Everybody sign up. And join me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So can you imagine how the how the good bird works, how the universe works? I didn't personally, you know, sponsor Nanay Tessie. She was just one of my, you know, attendees at that time. Can you imagine because of her, I was promoted easily in that marketing program. But if I did not take the chance, but if I was not courageous enough to stand up and, you know, step up and become a leader, I would have never met Nanai Tessie. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So there comes an opportunity for you, a chance for you that you really have to step up because that moment is your breakthrough already. That moment could be your answered prayer already. It's just a matter of you taking the initiative. Because when the universe throws you the right opportunity for you, make sure that you are ready. Because looking back, even if God gave me that test and I wasn't prepared, I could have never gone that far in this industry. Are you with me? Yes. So when you go home tonight, look for your own nanai test. <laughs> Learn and teach. You are learning tonight. You are learning because you'll be able to teach eventually in the future. As I was saying, great networkers are great trainers. We expect you to become trainers as well in the future. Take charge. Again, this is your responsibility. This is your life. This is your network. You cannot expect other people to develop and build your network. It's going to be your responsibility. So I always say, you cannot expect other people to do your own push-ups for you. You have to take charge. You want to lose weight? You do it for you. You don't, you know, you don't let other people do it for you. You cannot say to your spouses or now, stop eating, look at me, I'm getting fat. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Okay. Self-identity being upline. 
You need to become a leader so that you can set the identity of your group being an upline. Because you have to establish authority, you have to establish power as an upline. And your downlines will never step up in the future if you as an upline do not step up at all. So take charge, be an example, you have to be leader so that your downlines will be independent as well in the future. Because what you want to happen is that you want to develop groups, you want to develop people who are independent but never alone. Because if you have an organization or a network where downlines, everyone depend on you when well, you're not in a leveraged business anymore. So what you want to happen is that your downlines should be leaders as well like you and they should be independent. In the first place, the contract that you've signed with Aim Global is that you being an independent distributor. It, 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 it was not like it dependent distributor. It is independent distributor. Well, leaders are at the end of the day, there's a price, we pay, you know, pri a price greater than ordinary people. We pay a price greater than ordinary people to such an extent that we are required to work longer and harder than others. That's why we are paid bigger. Are you with me? Yes. Leaders, when sometimes your downline is already home, you are still doing the meeting after meeting. Downline is already sleeping, but you're still what? Checking your list, checking it twice, gonna find out who's active or not. <laughs> okay? And leaders, you have to, you know, internalize that you are the master of your destiny, you are the captain of your ship. You, 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 you hold, you handle the steering wheel of your life. So take charge, friends. Assume leadership. Even if your uplines are not here, Okay? Don't tell yourself, well, if my upline is not in the office anyway, so I'll not go there anymore. You can become successful in this business with that kind of attitude. Well, my upline is uh, not uh, making calls or making a follow-up on me anyway, so I'll just be passive and not be active. Well, you cannot be like that. You have to always internalize and think that this is your business and this is not someone else's business. People like to associate themselves with people who know where they're going. So, when you assume leadership, a lot of people would like to associate themselves to you. Because people would like to be with people who knows where they're going, who have direction. You being a downline, of course you want an upline and a direction. So, it's the same way. It's, it's, human, it's human behavior. We want to attach ourselves to people who have direction. So when you assume leadership, your downlines will also be proud of you. Your downlines, of course, will also be loyal to you because of your vision, because of your leadership. That's why, you know, a lot of people stick to their organization because they look up to their uplines. So if you want to become strong uplines, I'm telling you, assume leadership. Be a leader. Step up. Get out of your comfort zone. Comfort zone. Break your own cell shells. Go out there. Essential qualities of leaders. Okay? You must encourage. Can you imagine my ex personal experience if I if, if I was too, you know, too afraid at the time to assume leadership, then I could have never met my own non identity Burning desire. You must have emotional stamina. You must have physical stamina. It's very hard to build a network without emotional and physical stamina. Empathy, feeling for others. Decisiveness, decision making, fast decision making. Cannot be slow. You have to be decisive. If you feel that your prospect will not join, go to the next. Do not wait. Be decisive. A lot of us get stuck to our own place because we're too indecisive. It's very slow. We're very slow to decide to move and go on. You know what I'm saying? Yes. A lot of people, they have a hard time moving on to their lives. If your prospect do not like the business, move on. Yeah. Do not wait. 
If your girlfriend doesn't like you anymore, move on. <laughs> there are so many fish in the ocean. <laughs> Stop with your personal dramas. Like, I cannot do it. I'm so in love. <laughs> there, there's, there's worse than that. They will say, I'm gonna die. Imagine. Decisiveness, competitiveness. Competitive means, you know, willingness to win. It doesn't mean you have to compete with others, but you have to compete with yourself in terms of winning. Self-confidence. Confidence is free, but it can give you a lot of money. Leaders are accountable. Of course, you have to, you have to take uh, into consideration a lot of our policies. You do not just do the business, you know, uh, irresponsibly. Responsibility, credibility, dependability, okay. stewardship, and of course, leaders are loyal. They are loyal to their They are loyal to their people. Love your people. Programs. This is still part of you. Of so many things, many, many of uh, I mean, one of the many things that you have to change in this business is your program. Because the mind is like a computer. It's actually programmed. Programmed since we were child or children. Okay. based on the information that got in, since we don't have any filtering mechanisms since we are children. Anything that got into it, we just absorbed it and, you know, believed in it. That's why the children has the most fertile soil. Because what you plant there, 100% it will grow, whether bad or good. So beware of the things that you say to your children. Beware of the, th the movies that you make them watch. Beware of the things that you make them read. Because, you know, they grow because their mind is fertile, 100%. Unfortunately, there are so many misinformation, wrong belief system that was injected, that were injected into our minds since we were children and that are still here right now that we are adult already. And I call those things like programs in computer, they are corrupted by virus. And those virus are what? You know? Those misinformations, those social conditions, that money is bad, for example, all oh, they are rich because they are bad. You know what I'm saying? That money is not good, that it is better to be poor, not to become too ambitious. Can you imagine? When you come from a poor family, what you can hear from your parents is that, you know what? Don't be too ambitious, we're just poor. <laughs> And you're a child, and can you imagine your 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 mother and your father are talking about you know life is so tough, it's hard to make money, and you're still very little, and you're hearing those things getting into your mind. Life is tough, it's hard to make money, it's hard to make money. Life is tough. So now that you're adult and grown up, life is tough, it's hard to make money because that was injected in their mind and now getting manifested in your life. You get my point? Yes. So we have to get rid of those bios, okay? Like limiting beliefs. I cannot do that. I'm not too good. I'm not pretty. I'm not handsome. You know what I'm saying? You know, one thing you have to understand is, you know, those are the labels that the, that the, society just created because in essence those are just labels okay. labels labels those are just labels you're pretty or not you're fat or not you're sexy or not those are just labels because at the end of the day the real truth is you are a wonderful creation of god in this social condition. We are so conditioned by the media, by the models that you see in the billboards, 
especially the fashion. 90% of fashion is actually for women. And I'm sorry, but one of the most complicated creatures in the world are women. <laughs> when you curl your hair, the next day after, you want them straight. <laughs> when they're brown, you want them black. When they black, you want them red. <laughs> what do you really want? <laughs> you, 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 you try to pluck your eyebrows. <laughs> but before you leave, you try to poke this uh, eyebrow teacher or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yes. They go to the mall. When guys go to the mall, and buy a pair of shoes. We know what we want. You go to the store, check it out, you know, try them on. That's it. The ladies. They go to this first store. They try it on. And they will say to the same lady, okay, I'll just go around and uh, you know, go to the next store again, try another pair of shoes. Go to the next store again, try another pair of shoes. Guess what? At the end of the day, they go back to the first store. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes! You know, the society is created by all these, you know, commercials and everything, TV ads. That's why we never get satisfaction. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so, because the society has created this standard or labels, a lot of us would like to live up to that label. A lot of us would like to live up to that standard. A lot of us would like to live up to that kind of image. But the truth is, it was not there when, when the world was created. It was just the humans, the society. This big business establishment created this, this kind of hunger and you know this kind of uh, dissatisfaction, this kind of uh, uh, the, this drive that make us want to become like that. So the truth is, you know, you have to believe in yourself. You have to believe that you're beautiful. You have to believe that you're pretty, that you're handsome. So when you go up tonight and you you know, look at the person in front of the mirror. Always love that person. You know, you're so handsome. I love you. Well, you have to love yourself. Yes. The number one indication that you don't love yourself is that if you compare others yourself to other people, you don't love yourself. It's like her eyebrows are nice. <laughs> I wish I'm, I wish I'm that sexy like her. You don't love yourself, you don't love yourself. You know what I'm saying? So, the number one indication that you're not happy with yourself, that you don't love yourself, is that you look for something else. That you wish could be found in your body. So, you know, let me tell you one universal law in this uh, universe. Before other people love you, you have to love yourself first. So, break off with that limiting beliefs. You can do this. Don't tell yourself, I'm not good enough. Uh, you know. Break off. Break it off. Break those limiting beliefs. Patterns. Uh, there are a lot of people that have the same patterns happening in their lives. They are accident-prone pattern, always broke pattern. Always broken heart and patterns. Always being left by their partners and you know why these are things are happening because of your mindset because you never break off with your old limiting patterns or your patterns the patterns that keep repeating in your mind so if you want to have abundance if you want to have abundance in your life you have to have abundance mentality you know what i'm saying if you want a lot of people to go out you know if you want to have to if you want a lot of guys to go after you, then you have to tell yourself that, you know, I'm good and I'm a very scarce commodity. That's why a lot of guys should like you. <laughs> Instead of, you know, 
instead of this story that when this 21 year old lady you know finished you know college started with her life she's praying for the lord please give me a handsome guy a rich guy a young guy and a healthy guy and uh, a lot of things when she reached 25 and nobody came yet well, God, God just gave me handsome, rich, young. When she's 30, <laughs> just give me a um, healthy guy. <laughs> at, at 40, uh, no one yet, just give me any guy. <laughs> Who among you have this habit and you know for the last few years for the last few years you've always been late always late in your appointments always late at work always late and one day you promise yourself well today it's gonna be a new day I won't be late starting today you woke up two hours earlier than the usual went to the office because you don't like to be late but you keep telling yourself I won't be late, I won't be late, I won't be late, I won't be late, I won't be late. Guess what? Two hours early and you won't be late. Remember, you won't be late. There was an accident in the highway. And still, you came to the office late. Because the mind, let me tell you what, how the mind works. The mind cannot negate. It cannot negate. What do you mean it cannot negate? Don't think of a white elephant. What are you thinking? White elephant. <laughs> because the mind cannot negate. Are you with me? Yes. Do not think of a red car. No, I want a white car. No, don't control it, but the mind flashed a red car. Now that you're conscious, you were like, I will, I will, uh, you know, I will change. <laughs> But initially, the, the image that popped out was and you just change it to white or blue or orange. But the mind cannot negate. So instead of you saying, I won't be late, I will be on time. I will be on time. I will be on time. Instead of you, I hope it won't rain. I hope it won't rain. And guess what? It rained. <laughs> I have that kind of pattern when normally I go to the to have my car washed. Well, I hope it won't rain. I hope it won't rain. Lo and behold, after car wash, it normally rains. <laughs> because we attract what we think. So, you know what I'm saying? Yes. How many of you who has never been saving from your salary for the last few months? And one day you told yourself, well, you know what? I'll start saving up. I'll start saving up. I'm not going to use my credit card anymore. I'll start saving up. And guess what? I'll start saving up. I don't want to be broke anymore. I don't want to be broke anymore. I will want to be broke anymore. Guess what? You know, a few dollars that you save, suddenly you lost your phone. And the, the, the dollar you save, you used to buy a new phone. Still no savings. <laughs> Why is that pattern happening? Because the mind, again, cannot negate. Are you with me? Yes. Those who are always in a broken relationship. Uh, I mean, they get the relationship after two years, they broke up, got to another relationship, another two years broke up, got to another relationship, two years after that, they break up again. You know why had that happened? Because after relationship, from one relationship to another, and they come to another relationship, go into another relationship, they would normally say, oh, Two years from now, probably I'll, I'll break up again with this guy. That's why he keeps repeating and repeating and repeating. I used to have this kind of pattern that when I'm wearing a, any white, any white shirt, all or whatever, any white top, every time I eat anything with sauce, I normally or accidentally, you know, get a splash on my white shirt. 
Because you know what? My pattern is this. Oh, I'm wearing white again. I must be careful. I eat chicken joy and the greedy drop again. Wow, guys. See? See? You know what I'm saying? You are confirmed. We try to confirm these patterns in our lives by our power. So if you want to break that, like in networking, no, I have a good feeling. This won't show up. <laughs> and they didn't show up or he didn't show up. See, he didn't show up. I'm right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying now? Those are patterns. Break those kind of patterns. Okay? Social conditioning. Don't be affected by the social conditioning. The, the way the society, the media is conditioning us. What is beautiful, what is not. Who says? Who set that standard? What is beautiful and not? Let me ask you. Who set that standard? It's the society. It's a society. Did the universe say that? Did God say who is God the beautiful or not? It's the society. It's, that's why being good or bad is subjective. Being good or bad is subjective. It cannot be universal. Because in some nations, one thing about this thing is good, but in some nations, one thing about this is not good. You know what I'm saying? In one, For one person, Eating pork is bad. But to another person, eating pork is okay. For one person, eating a pig's pig's blood is okay. Like in the Philippines, some people eat dinubuan. But to some people, eating pig's blood is bad. That's why what is good and bad is purely subjective. It can't be universal. What can be good to you can be bad to me. What can be bad to me? Could be good to you. You see? So, these are just labels and standards that the society have set. And guess what? We have to break from it and not be dictated but what, by what the society has set upon us. Do not believe everything you think. I will repeat. Do not believe everything you think. Because the mind has a thinking of its own that is not actually in congruence with our own belief. That's why you tell yourself sometimes, I hate myself. I hate what I'm thinking. Are you with me? Yes. So stop with that. The herd mentality. Not because everyone is doing it, it's the right thing to do. It's the herd mentality. We tend to follow what most people do. Well, sometimes I, 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 I see that. Like, there's a lot of line in the Philippines, for example, there's a lot of ATM machines. Like, like, for example, three ATM machines. And when I go to the line, I will say, the two other ATM has no they have no lines. People lining up. There's no people lining up to the two machines. And there is this one long line where people are lining up. So normally, what would you think? When you're going to get money, well, probably those two machines are not working. I might as well fall to this one, right? Without you actually charging. That's her mentality. So what I normally do, because I know this training, I normally check first myself if it's really not working. And most of the time, they are working. So get me money. And guess what? People's like lining up at my bank. You know what I'm saying? Have you experienced that? Yes. That, you know, since people are lining up to this, well, I might also line up to this. Okay, like in the airport, in the airport, or you will see, sometimes in the Philippines, you see, if you go outside the Philippines, there's a line for the OFW, there's a line for the, you know, regular passport holders. And you will see a lot of not OFW. Falling, up, uh, falling in line to the regular line. Because there's a big sign of overseas Filipino workers, OFW. So, of course, if you 
try to do the numbers, there are more people going out of the Philippines that are not OFW. So the line to that not OFW line are long. And to the OFW line, it's short. So, you know, when you go there and you're just going to go out of the country for, let's say, a visit to a certain place, where are you going to fall in line? Where are you going to fall in line? Not OFW. Because you're not an OFW anyway. But sometimes it's too long. Because your thinking is that, well, maybe I'm not allowed to the OFW line. But most of the time, anyone is allowed to that OFW line as well. You know what I mean? You're, you're following me. Yes. Sometimes you make a lot of decisions based on herd mentality. When, when, when a lot of people is doing that or are like that, Let's just follow that because that's the safest, you know. Well, as networkers, you can follow the herd. You have to set your own direction as a network marketer. Because for all we know, the right direction is not employment, but network marketing. Yes. Alright? Okay. Change your financial blueprint. Okay. Your psychological wallet. Expand your psychological wallet. Make big money. You have to know the difference between big money and small money. Big money and small money. Oh. 10,000. Uh, let's say. Uh, how much is the minimum here again in UAE per month? 1,000. 2,000. Oh, 2,000 AED per month. Times 12 months. This is? Oh. 24,000 times 10 years. Okay? 2,000 per month times 12 months is how much? 24,000. 24,000 per month times 10 years, how much? 240,000 AED. Big money, small money. To a lot of people, their blueprint is, this is big. But that is actually small. Because 10 years. What if I tell you this one? 20,000 okay, AED times 12 months times 1 year. How much is that? 240,000 also. It's basically the same. Am I right? Yes. Because what I did is just the zero here in 10 years, I added here. <laughs> but instead of 10 years there, it's only 1 year. 20,000 AED times 12 months. Times one year, that's 240,000 AED as well. But this is a big money. Are you with me? Yes. They are the same amount, but by perspective, they are different. You have to change your psychological wallet. Now, I'm telling you here in AED, in, in UAE, <laughs> if you perceive the new package as, you know, it's too big. 1,250 AED, it's too big. Can you imagine? How can 20,000 AED go to your pocket when your mind perceives this as already big? You know what I'm saying? Yes. If your mind perceives this as too expensive, too big, believe me. The 2,000, 20,000 AED per month earning potential of him global will never happen to you. Will never come to you. So just try to, you know, treat this as, oh, it's just a small. People can afford that. Because if you see this as really big money, can you imagine what will happen to you? If this comes to your pocket, maybe you will die already. <laughs> because your mind cannot absorb it anymore. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Tonight, you will have to let go of those things that no longer serve you and help you. To change the fruits, you have to change the roots. What do I pertain to this? You want to change your result, the fruits? Change your mindset. Because whatever that is happening to you is a result of what's going on through your mind or inside your mind. So please, be aware, be careful what you put inside your mind. Are you with me? Yes. If 
people can only learn what's the power of their mind, a lot of you will be able to change your lives. Yes. Just a simple switch in your mindset will actually change what? Your health, your relationship, your career, your financial status, just by changing your mindset. Because, you know, when you change the way you think, a lot of things happen in your body, physiologically speaking. Anyway, that's a different topic. I'll be discussing that uh, in the future, probably. So, key attributes of peak performers. Well, I will have to uh, go through this one by one, but I just want to, you know, browse this. Knowledge, products, technical, the technical aspects. Company, customers, competition, business, finance. Can you imagine? If you want in global, if you want networking to be your career, I'm telling you, you should all be familiar with this seven. Okay, this one, two, three is inside in global. Okay, the products, the company, customers are all about in global. Competition, business, industry is outside in global. Number seven is inside. So do not just be familiar with what is happening inside the company. Be familiar with what's happening all over the world. What's the impact of the economy to network marketing? Why networking will thrive in the future? Because people nowadays are different. A lot of people are enterprising. A lot of people would want to become the, the boss of their own. Unlike before, traditionally speaking, like in, in times, I mean, during the times of my parents probably, the traditional ones would be just, you know, go to school, get good grades, and go look for a good job. Now, people would want to be a business owners, people would want to become their own boss. So it's different nowadays. And of course, you have to have a deep knowledge about yourself. You have to know yourself. Okay? Attitudes and belief, concept of self-image, concept of self-ideal, and concept of self-esteem. I'm telling you, if you want to become a successful distributor, you have to have a high, a high self-esteem. You have to have a confidence in yourself. High confidence about yourself. So let's talk about that. How do you improve your self-image? Okay? Number one, accept compliments and say thank you. You improve your self-image by saying that, by telling that. When people tell you, oh, you're so pretty, thank you. Do not say, oh, you're so pretty, no, I <laughs> Hour putting all those things in your face, and when people give you compliments, are you with me? Yes. When people say you are good, you tell thank you. You look them in the eye and you say thank you. When people congratulate you, thank you. When people tell you good job, job well done, you say thank you. Compliment. Well, if you give, if, if you say thank you. And people say compliment to you, give it back as well. Learn to say compliment also. Okay? Learn to say, if they are beautiful, then tell them they're beautiful. Don't tell them like her eyebrows are not symmetrical. <laughs> <laughs> She's supposed to have good eyes, but you're saying she has morning glory. <laughs> Tell you morning glory. Muta. <laughs> Praise yourself. Praising yourself is different from being conceited. Praise yourself like, I think I did, I did good today. I think uh, I was able to do good in terms of closing that seven heads earlier. I think I did a good job because uh, my boss just thanked me. So say wonderful things about yourself. Praise yourself. For example, you run for one minute. Praise yourself. I run for one minute. Maybe that's two calories already. <laughs> Instead of not running, okay, or losing any calories at all. Always speak well of yourself. Say affirmative words like I'm good. Okay, I can do this. I'm positive. I'm capable. I'm healthy. Do not say disempowering words. You know, 
One of the best ways, one of the best ways to kill a negative attitude is when they are still starting in your mind because that is where they are weakest. That is where they are the weakest. So, when a young negative attitude pops up out of your mind, or, you know, your self-dialogue is negative, always say these three powerful word, words. Stop, delete, cancel. <laughs> okay? Because most of our self-dialogues are negative, so we just cut them off. How do you cut them off? Stop, delete, cancel. They will be gone. Or you cannot, you know, even if you say it in your mind, silently, you don't need to say it loudly. Because uh, you, you're going to be, you're going to appear like a freak. <laughs> like you're inside the train and you say, Stop, cancel! <laughs> Separate your behavior from yourself. So don't be too hard on yourself. If you commit mistakes, then, you know, move on. Don't tell yourself, I hate myself. I cannot forgive myself. You know, I forgot. One of the limiting beliefs is we have is these words, I am getting old. When you forget your ball pen or wallet, getting, I'm really getting old. It's me. So remember that age is just a number. Well, you know what? When I was a lot, lot younger, I, I couldn't understand that why people say why num old, uh, age is just a number. When I reached 30 last year, I understood. <laughs> <laughs> Self-image, treat your body well. Because sometimes, our confidence comes from our physical attributes. So help yourself to also have that kind of self-image. Let people know how you expect to be treated. If you want respect, well, you have to give respect. If you want to be, you know, if you want to be... If you're on time, if you're prompt, then you have to show people that, you know, you value time. Because coming on time is, you know, coming on time means giving respect to other people's time. Do you know that? Yes. That when you come on time, it's not about you. It's about, you know, other people. Okay? So, you know, stop that mentality of Filipino time. Get around with good people. The law of association. You associate yourselves with good people. Read books that will give you inspiration. <clears throat> I told you last night, your life will depend on the books that you read, the, the people you associate yourselves with, the movies that you watch five years from now. Okay? Always picture in your mind how you want, not how you are. So see, advance yourself in advance. You will then necessarily gravitate toward your dominant thought. Picture yourself. Like if you want to be you're 200 pounds now and you want to be 150 pounds, always picture yourself in 150 pounds. If you want to become a successful distributor, always perceive, always see yourself in advance like talking in front of a lot of people because those people are your dominant. Mm. Yeah. Don't, do not picture yourself like you're always alone because your mind will eventually gravitate toward, towards that reality. Okay. Seven universal laws of selling. This is simple. Law of cause and effect. If something happens, then something costs it. If you get a paying in because you presented, that's it. If you have a prospect because you've invited someone. If someone showed up because you did something. Do not expect that, why am I, I have no pay in. Did you do something? Nothing. You're crazy. Are you with me? Yes. Law of compensation, you get what you put in, in terms of effort. Okay? So do not complain if, like, you know, you're not pouring everything that you've got. You have to give your 100%. Law of control. You feel good if you are in control of your life. So take charge. It feels better if you are in control. Are you with me? Yes. If it feels good that you, you, when you're in the steering wheel, instead of just being the passenger. Law of belief. Whatever you believe becomes your reality. Belief can change how you perceive reality. Because the universe will follow not your reality, but how you believe things. That's why I told you earlier, you know, you don't get what you deserve. You get what you believe you deserve. 
Law of concentration, whatever you dwell upon grows. So by law of focus, where energy, where your focus, you know, wherever you put your focus, guess what? Energy flows. Energy flows. Law of attraction, whatever you imagine, you can create. So always imagine, always visualize exciting results. See yourself as a successful distributor. See yourself as a diamond global ambassador. Yes! Yes! See the exciting results in advance. Believe by knowing you have already arrived. Again, I will repeat. Believe by knowing you have already arrived. Start by believing in yourself that you've already arrived. In your mind, it's already done. We're just working for it. Okay? Law of correspondence, your outer world, whatever is happening to you, outer world, is a reflection of your inner world. Your outer world is what? Your health. Your relationship. Your financial status. Your wallet. That's your outer world. To change the fruits, change the roots. What's the root? The inner world. What is your inner world? Your mind. Your attitude. Your emotions. Your feelings. Your feelings. So I'm telling you, one very important secret. Happiness drives everything in this world. Trust me. So make sure you are happy in a global. Yes. Even if it's hard, happiness drives you. Even if it's hard being here in a foreign land, Happiness drives you because you get satisfaction by sending money back to your family. Are you with me? Yes. So happiness drives everything practically. So make sure that when you're in in global, even if your prospects are not showing up, you're not yet making tangible income and all, you should be happy. You wake up every day and you say to yourself, well, I'm, I'm blessed, I'm thankful because I'm in in global. I'm, I'm not in global. Do not wake up and say, No, I will go to the office of AIM again. I will recruit again. Okay? So, these are the laws of selling, but as a network marketer, we have the eighth law. And that law is the law of numbers. Nothing, be, nothing beats numbers. Nothing beats numbers. So, those of you who are doing online here, how many of you are doing the online marketing here? Okay, let me, let me show you this. Online. Nothing with numbers. Now, let me ask you, in terms of presentation, which is longer, online or offline? Online. offline. Which is longer? Offline. offline. Which is shorter? Online. online. Because in online, you already have this template. Yes. You already have this script where you just, you know, copy paste and copy paste. Max, maximum minute in terms of presentation. When your prospects are not that you know inquisitive, they don't ask a lot of questions and all. Just merely presentation. How many minutes would you normally present the business? Three. Three. Probably ten. ten. Maximum. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Five minutes. Ten minutes per prospect. Now. To those who are doing this online, do you think, how many hours do you normally do the business by online marketing per day? You know, because you're tired from work and all, probably before you sleep, you do some online and all. On the average, those of you doing the online marketing, how many of you? Three. Four. Okay, or how many hours do you normally do your online business before you, you know, sleep? Normally? Three. Two, three. So let's say two hours. Okay, two hours per day. Now, 10 minutes maximum presentation per prospect. Which means in 60 minutes, how many prospects you should have talked to? Six. Six. In two hours, how many prospects you should have talked to? Twelve should have talked to 12 prospects per day. Yes. And if you are doing the business, 
part-time, every day at least two hours for 30 days, you must have talked to at least 360 prospects per month. Let's say you're lazy. <laughs> Let's just have everything. From 360, you talk to 180 per month. Don't tell me 180 people, not even a single day in you will get. Let's say you're super lazy. <laughs> you just presented to 90 people in one month. Again, this is average, 360. 180 is lazy. 90, super lazy. Don't tell me you will never get a pay in out of 90 people in one month. This is just a numbers game. Normally, you don't get enough pay in because you don't present. <laughs> or you just present one person every day. One person every day is just 30 people every month. Are you with me? Yes. yes. So increase the numbers of presentation, you increase the probability of payment. That's the law of numbers. Are you with me? Yes. yes. Okay, are you learning? Yes. yes. Okay, next. Skills. Well, I don't have to, you know, do this one by one. I just want you to say this or take a picture of the areas that you need to improve as a network marketer. You have to really be good in these areas, skills. Okay. Again, I said uh, last night, your income will be based upon your skills. skills. Okay. Same way with your work. You're being paid based on your skills. The highly skilled you are, the better pay you get. Are you with me? Yes. That's why if you work for a visa in the U.S., like highly skilled workers, they have a special visa for that. And they get paid a lot being highly skilled people. Okay. Habits. You have to be good in goal setting. Be able to manage your time well. Organize yourself. Okay. You must have GMRC. <laughs> everything we learn, everything that is important in life, we learned actually in kindergarten. I will repeat. Everything important in life, we actually learned in kindergarten. When you were kinder, in kindergarten, what did the teacher say? Okay? What did the teacher say? Do not hurt your schoolmate. Do not hurt your classmate. When you try to, you know, get a toy, put them back. Something like that. Brush your teeth in the morning. <laughs> be courteous, be polite. Everything important in life we learn in kindergarten. And that's it. Good manners and right conduct. Be professionals. Learn how to say thank you. Learn how to say learn to learn to smile. Learn to say uh, you know please. Okay? Learn to say excuse me. Learn to say pardon me. Forgive me. Say sorry. Okay. Proper hygiene. It's very hard to convince people if you're not. <laughs> Like if you're presenting the business and you did not cut your nails, <laughs> if the prospect is thinking, you know, you say we will become successful. <laughs> and people will say the prospect will probably say, you know, they can plant something in there. <laughs> so you to brush your teeth before you throw up your prospect. Very hard to you know present, and uh, the prospect will say, "Oh, I know what you ate earlier." <laughs> and you say, "What?" Uh, the prospect will say, 
Well, something really greeny. <laughs> greeny lip. Tatapos, you have a greeny lip. <laughs> and you will respond, No, it was yesterday. <laughs> Action! We're almost done. Okay. We're done with you. We're now in action. What are you willing to do? Are you going to try? Do your best of whatever it takes. If you want to become successful, then do whatever it takes. Are you willing to sacrifice? Yes or no? Yes! Ask yourself, have you mastered all the skills available? If not, then keep learning. If not, then keep learning because learning is a never-ending process. Am I doing the most productive thing at any given moment? So you always, you know, seize your day. You always seize your moment. Okay? It's about going back to basic because success in this business is not actually complicated. You, you, you observe those people who are very successful here and believe me, you will uh, observe and you will learn that these successful people just do the basics frequently. That's why they are very successful. The main idea is to build an organization of motivated people. This is a requirement to become a successful distributor. Okay. Learn the skills first. We're almost done. It's very important. Okay. Learn the skills first. What are the skills? Retail, sponsor, and coach. Can you, can you say that? Number one is... Yes. Number two is? Awesome. Number three is? Oh. Those are just the most important skills in ever. Okay. Learn skills through knowledge, coaching, and practice. Numbers are created by everyone learning and working the network system. Because can you imagine if you have 1,000 people who can retail the products? Who can each of those 1,000 1, people to sponsor? And each of those 1,000 can coach? You have a very effective network. What is the network system? A business based on a system, which means people can be working if you want to stop. Do you want that? Do you want that kind of system? Yes. Where one day when you stop doing the business of networking, you still make money because you are able to duplicate yourself so well. Do you like that? Yes. yes. It means when people stop working, it means that people can be working if you want to stop. Even if you stop doing the network, you can still make money. It means that people can be working in other cities, countries, and languages. Everyone can succeed because everyone is working the same system based on skills. So let's try to imagine this. You are able to develop, let's say, 1,000 people here in UAD. You are able to coach them just following the network-based system. One day, they all grew and expanded everywhere. Because you have the same system, you think they will expand simultaneously outside UAE? Yes. Yes. You see? So in AIM Global in networking, you do not just develop, we create a system. That one day, even if you know all your downlines are gone and they're everywhere, you're still making money. Okay? The success secret is confidence. What do you mean by confidence? Good in skills. <laughs> So you must be good in skills, and your downline should also be good in skills as well. The more competent your downlines become, the more confident they become. Because have you felt something that you're really good at something, and you have this kind of confidence to, you know, uh, boast about it or put a wager on something? Like if you're good in playing billiards, what do you normally do? You become confident? anyone would like to bet or put a wager because you know you're good. So competence leads to increased confidence. If you're good at presentation, you keep looking for prospects. But if you're not good for in, in invitation and prospecting and you're not good in presentation, you don't like to talk to anyone. <laughs> if you don't talk to anyone, then there's no production. No production means no result. So it's very easy. Make your downlines, make yourself competent because it leads to increased confidence. And confidence leads to increased result. It's very simple. Very, very simple. Remember, independent distributors are the key to success. 
Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Stay with me on this. How do you become competent? Three areas. KSA. We also have this in employment. Remember? KSA? Mm. Yes. Key result areas. KRA and KSA. <coughs> knowledge, skills, and competence. Uh, knowledge, skills, and attitude. In the middle is competence. Okay. I will not discuss that anymore. Accelerate your learning. Learn as fast as you can. This is your career. This is not a race in terms of getting your result. So, you know, the new book that says, uh, the new, the new fast. You know what's the new fast nowadays? Slow is fast. I'll repeat. You can buy that book. The new fast nowadays is not fast. Slow is the new fast. If you know the adage that's very powerful, it means you don't get after the result outright that fast. What you do slowly, you build yourself. You build your skills. You build your character. That may seem slow, but let me tell you, it will get you there faster than anything else. So slow is the new fast. Okay? You need to be tested. Well, I'm telling you, there's going to be a lot of challenges and obstacles along the way. You cannot expect consistent results until you are completely competent. Practice, practice, practice. Be patient and be patient and be patient. And always persevere. Okay. Okay. Bakit nandiyan yan? Isama lang. Sorry. Okay. All right. Let's talk about creating a tidal wave in your group. Do you want a tidal wave in your group? Yes. You want a tsunami in your group? Yes. How to create that? So, this is the network income curve. You know, when I normally discuss, I'm very uh, scientific with statistics and data. Okay? So, this is the income, and this is, these are the people, linear. You will see that normally everything starts at zero. Slowly and slowly, you build people. And as you build people, slowly and slowly, your income grows. Yes. When the power of duplication takes control of your network because you are able to learn and teach and coach people, it will grow with little or no effort on your part. That is what you call momentum. The hardest part when a plane normally takes off, normally, it consumes a lot of energy, it consumes a lot of air, uh, a lot of airplane fuel and all, and all the engines are in full throttle. Normally, what stage is that? Take off, landing, or you know, gliding. Take off. In Inglo, but it's the same. The hardest part, the part where you need the most energy, where you give it all, where you have to give it your all, is the takeoff and the beginning stage. Because you're trying to divide the gravity. But once it's taken off and it's there and it's cruising, it's a lot easier. So when you're having a hard time building your network and taking off, you're in the right direction. Because everything, when it's easy and there's no gravity, it just simply means you're falling down. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Churn and gravity, you know, when, it, when, when an airplane takes off, there are two normally, not actually a uh, momentum uh, destroyer, but there are normally two issues that prevent momentum, okay? Or destroys momentum. Churn and gravity. Churn is the, the shaking. Gravity, of course, is the pull. So in networking, churn pertains to the attrition. And gravity is the negative attitude or emotion because negative attitude is like gravity that pulls you down. I've seen many network grow only to be crushed by the gravity, by the negative emotion, negative attitude of the uplines. It's very hard to build a network, but let me tell you, just one snap because of negativity, negative emotion, negative attitude, you know, by the power of that, it's like gravity. It will pull anything down. 
So speed is the key. You want to become successful? Let ladies and gentlemen always be on the go. Speed. Always talk to people. Do not be idle. You know what I'm saying by idle? You, you're just in one place and you're not doing anything. Always be mobile, moving. Because speed, that the universe loves speed. Love speed. You know, if you always on the go, you will be more blessed. You will be more blessed. Gaining enough momentum to take off and speed that overcomes gravity. Taking off, how do you take off? Like a sh this shuttle. Maximum energy. Give it your best shot. Give it your all. As I always say in Tagalog, kung meron kang agimat, virtud at anting-anting, ilabas mo na. <laughs> in English, if you have special powers like uh, that of a talisman, you know, bring it on. Make it of use. It's now that you have to, you know, really use it. Are you with me? Yes. Massive action. Wag papatay patay. Okay? Don't be sloppy. Okay? Sloppy. So massive action. And have a sense of urgency. Because when you have a sense of urgency, you will communicate an, an urgency that will be felt by your people. You know, one thing about you, you have to be moving always, you have to be always, you know, on the go, like bringing people here, showing up in the office, bringing some new members, some new prospects. You send a message to your downlines that you are active, that you have this kind of a sense of urgency. And when you, when you move that way, it actually affects the whole network, especially your leaders. You know, my upline, when I was very, very active, every time I see my personal upline, my sponsor, bring in a new prospect in the office, and my upline or sponsor make us, you know, he, he lets this new prospect talk to us. Guess what? After we talk to his prospect, I feel really, you know, uh, I feel envious actually. <laughs> I feel like, how come he's already number one and yes, he still has a prospect? I'm not even in the top 20 and here I am sitting in the office with no one. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It challenges me. Seeing my sponsor having a new direct, direct sponsor downline. So it's the same effect with your downline. If you come here with a lot of people, prospects and all, and you know, let your downline see your prospects, your new people, then they will also be challenged and inspired as well. Are you with me? Yes. yes. But if you go here with no one, your downlines will also follow you. <laughs> you will all see the same faces here in the office. Your urgent action creates action in others, in your team, so that you get sponsoring speed and thus your network takes off. Last, coaching. Now, I want you to really, you know, uh, look, up, look into this seriously. Because uh, they made a survey all over the world in direct selling and multi-level marketing. And they came up with the number one reason, down to the least reason why people leave. So this is arranged in such a way that A is the number one reason, down to the least reason why people leave. The number one people leave, you know why? It's poor communication, or miscommunication, or no communication at all. Misinterpretation of the message, or they did not get the message across effectively. So as leaders, ladies and gentlemen, make sure you get the mess, or you give the message across clearly to your people. Be sensitive. Words are more powerful than swords. Because words tend to hurt more people than swords. So learn the right to use the right words. Learn to be empathic and sens sensitive to people. People leave because they get hurt. People leave because they thought their reputation was destroyed. People leave because they are not happy with their leader anymore because the leader cannot motivate their downlines. Insufficient support. Poor leadership. Insufficient support means, you know, a lot of people, a lot of 
Distributors are misguided because they don't know what to do simply because the uplines do not also know what to do. <laughs> How can the upline support the downlines if the upline themselves are confused? Do not know what to do simply because they are lazy to learn, they do not go to the office, they don't want to be mentored by their uplines. So they cannot support their downlines. You know, our new downlines need our support in terms of direction, in terms of vision, in terms of training, in terms of training them so that they will be able to acquire the right skills. So how can you support your downlines if you do not know anything? Poor leadership, we've discussed this earlier. Poor leadership, you know, leaders who uplines are not able to overcome their fear, who do not have the credibility, who are not courageous, who do not have the emotional and physical stamina, who are not, you know, accountable. Lack of training. Well, A, B, C, D, for me, are all a question of leadership. Mm -hmm. A, B, C, D are all about leadership. The least reason why people live is actually insufficient in me. People do not live because they are not making money. No. I've been here for 21 years. I've seen people stay in this business even if they are not making money. But I've seen people live even if they are making a lot of money. It could be an issue, but it is not the number one issue. People stay, you know what? Because they are happy. People stay because, you know what? They learn a lot. They are happy with their company. They are happy with their group. They are happy with their uplines. They find, you know, satisfaction and recognition inside their group. So I'm showing you this because I believe one day this could help you. This, this piece can really help you in terms of building your group effectively. You will know, at least you have the information why people leave so that you will be able to, you know, uh, avoid doing this so that your people will stay because in network marketing, the truth is, getting together is just the beginning. Staying and keeping is the real multi-level market. Mm -hmm. There's no point of people going in, joining, and then leaving after that. That's not networking. Networking is, you know, people joining, empowering them, developing them, making them leaders as well, and then making them then become making them successful and also become a force for good to their group as well. Coaching is the highest paid and worst performed skill by builders. Again, I will repeat. It is the highest paid and worst performed skill by builders. Why? It is the highest paid because this is the skill that actually develops the network. Coaching, training, mentoring are the skills that develop the network. When I say that develop the network, that grows that multiplies the people. All sponsoring does is build a base of people to grow from. Coaching is the worst performed skills because most people are confused about what they need to do. Okay? Because after having a lot of people under your group, the best skills that you can do or learn is how to coach people. Because you would want to duplicate yourself and create many leaders down the line. But, you know, this part coaching is actually in the growing part. That's not your job yet. Remember, there are three stages in networking, as I mentioned, building, what's next? Growing and In growing, coaching is the most important skills. But, you cannot go to growing stage where you coach people when you haven't built yet. Who are you gonna coach if you have no people? Zero multiplied by any powerful thing is still equal to zero. Let's say your coaching skill, your growing skill from a skill to from one to ten, let's say your growing skills is ten. You're very good. But you have nothing to coach. No one to coach. No one to guide. 
nothing. Are you with me? Yes. So, we talk about coaching when you're in the growing stage. In UAE, for the last three years, believe me, we are still on the building stage. You are still, even if you joined AIM Global UAE just now, even if we're three years here already, I'm telling you, those of you who are new ones, you are still on the pioneering stage of AIM Global UAE. Why are you in the pioneering stage? Because we're still on the building stage. You're, we're still on the building stage. And even though that in global has been existing for the last 11 years, especially in the Philippines, because of the innovation that we've made, in global again is like on a building stage with reference to the new marketing plan that we have. So as I said uh, last night, the best time to join in global is 11 years ago and now. So don't miss this opportunity. Are you with me? Yes. So tomorrow will be another session with you guys. And tomorrow is another special session because we will have a leaders meeting which will be led no less but than the President Dr. Ed Cabantog. And we will be formally introducing Mr. TJ Villanueva tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we will be staying with you guys here for a couple of weeks. And uh, as soon as we work, uh, he's working for me and all the papers necessary. He will be staying here in the Middle East for the next six months to be uh, to be of help each and every one of you to really guide you in terms of building your network because he has also extensive experience in networking because he himself was was a very successful network marketer marketer as well. So you will be able to learn that from him. So tomorrow will be like a teaser because uh, we will uh, let him speak in front of you guys so that uh, we can all have this. Uh, uh, getting to know each other tomorrow. Yeah, so we're getting to know each other. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, I end my presentation. Thank you very much and see you all tomorrow. God bless you. Thank you for watching. That's all for now. Don't forget to like, share, and comment for more future trainings. Bye-bye!